Assalamu alaikum. Mr. Moderator, our distinguished guests, brothers and sisters, our friends and, and our enemies. <laughs> no, I, I think like, it's true because you know one of the things that happened too was that you know 9-11 happens and we're like hey we're law-abiding we don't we don't kill people we're not we're not like that right which is true all of us know that but the western country started to push this idea that being a muslim who's law-abiding is not good enough your values have to be like our values you have to have western values right and that's oh. that's exactly what's happening in france like france is 100 percent on board with this rhetoric um and so Muslims started to have to, you know, deal with this and we saw kind of splits in the community where there's the one side that's trying to prove its loyalty, right? And trying to say, no, we're on your side. Look, we'll, we'll find a way to make your values, you know, exactly like our values or very similar to our values. Look, Islam is actually very pro-women and Islam is actually very pro-democracy and very pro this and pro that. And I'll say there's not some truth to that, but that, but what you're what are you trying to do? You're trying to create a concept that fits hundred percent what they're demanding of you. Right? You understand mm -hmm. what I mean? Like we're trying to cater our religion to what they're demanding of us. Um, versus asking hey, what what is Western values anyways? Like now now this question is meaningless because ask people what is Western values. They're disagreeing about everything by themselves, right? The Republicans yeah. and the Democrats and the Liberals, and they're all, they don't agree on anything, right? So now this question kind of has lost its steam. But that pushing of this, like, are your values like ours, really was a problem. And Muslims didn't, you know, were split on this. There were some Muslims who were like, for instance, I'll give you one example. Do we condemn acts of terrorism, right? Most Muslims were like, we condemn, we condemn, we condemn. And then some Muslims are like, by by demanding that we condemn you're already treating us differently and you're already insinuating that we're guilty yeah. right so yeah, i don't yeah. want i don't want to go down that road to begin with and frankly what would happen was that the muslim who didn't condemn they said look at him he doesn't want to condemn he's a he's a terrorist sympathizer and the muslim who did condemn they said look at him he's lying to us and behind closed doors he's saying something else so you're damned if you do damned if you don't right mm. um and you know, you know that's, that's, about well, censorship. that's a that's a big observation. I mean, I mean, for you guys, it's kind of normal, but I've never heard what you just said before about, you know, the the kind of mindset of a Muslim uh, pre 9/11 was submission. You know, even the weak Muslim knows, okay, I'm not obeying, you know, but I'm sinning, but I know what I'm supposed to do. I know that it's wrong, and, you know, I, I was all, always under the impression that. This kind of what you know that the Muslims becoming weaker in Islam was due to the kind of being raised in the Western society. But when you think about it, they they were raised in the Western society in the nineties, and yeah, it is worse nowadays. But it's not it's not that different to the nineties, really. It's not like a, a million miles away. But the but the but the Islamic Dawah is. You know, it's like if 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 if, if the if the Islamic message has has been watered down in that sense, you know, on the minbar and in the videos, like you're saying, to more to mean peace and, and try to, um, you know, uh, you know, it it has a massive effect on the mindset of the Muslim. You know, where it's more like you say, you know, you know it's, it's it's less about actually following it. That's a massive thing, man. Like. What can we learn from that? How can we move on from that? You know, what do we need to bro, do? Bro, bro, yeah. you, you already know my, my opinion already about this um, condemning stuff, right? We talked about this. You know what I mean? Whenever, whenever they demand that you condemn some crime that some Muslim committed, you always ask them, you first. After you condemn then maybe I will think about condemning a crime that a Muslim committed. You understand? No. The, these are the same people, right, that told you that 19 Saudis, you know, uh, hijacked these two planes, flew them into uh, these buildings, right, watched building number seven that never got hit by anything, okay? It, and I repeat, building seven never got hit by anything, things. 
okay? And it, and it crumbles to the ground. And on top of that, they said, how do they know that these 19 Saudis? Because after these planes exploded, they found the passports of two Saudis on the ground in the road. This is the story that they're telling us. And when they research these 19 Saudis, they're alive in Saudi Arabia. But the Muslims did it. You understand? And on top of that, let's say, for example, like we accept your, your story because, you know, some people don't believe in conspiracy theories. They just believe in, in um, uh, uh, convenience, you know, whatchamacallit, uh, like the, 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 the convenient narrative uh, theory. You know what I mean? Everything is just conveniently fits perfectly, you know, in the government narrative. They believe in that. They don't believe in conspiracy. They don't believe that the government conspires to do anything. They say, okay, fine. We accept, right? We accept that 19 alive Saudis, okay, <laughs> flew these two planes into your two buildings and three buildings crumbled to the ground on that scene. We believe that, okay? How do you justify going to Iraq? Going to Iraq, in which you said by yourself they got nothing to do with 9 11. How do you justify that? And furthermore, this war in Iraq, you told us it was because Saddam had ma uh, weapons of mass destruction. Yes. And you didn't find them. You didn't find your, your imaginary weapons of mass destruction, but we're going to stay in Iraq anyway because we done messed up. We, we screwed up all these lives. So, you know, we, we might as well stay so we can fix the country. Yeah. And you expect us to believe you? You first. You condemn first. Yeah. That's, you know, I was, sorry, you know, I was talking about, and I don't, like I said, talk, go into conspiracies later. For me, wh whatever, whether there's conspiracies or not about September 11th, I know for sure, well, I believe that there would be Muslims willing to do that. Um, and, and the reason why is because of the context of, like you say, of what's happened, you know, and, and I think most people, when you look at, when you understand the actions of America on the Middle East, you know, when you think about the horrific things that have happened, does it surprise me that people want to respond? I remember somebody describing it as the bully getting a bloody nose. Uh, and I know sometimes it can sound like justification, um, but, but but it's not. But my, my, my I think my point is, whether it's conspiracy or not, um, I believe that there are Muslims that would probably have done that. Um, and, and I think I remember hearing at the time, and it's really interesting hearing, it's beautiful what you guys have been saying about it, is Islam was submission now becoming peace. Yeah. And uh, and Muslims trying to fit in this lib liberal because you get then you you get Muslims liberalizing and saying and tak fearing people, you know, saying those over there, they're not Muslim. And, and probably people over here, and Allah knows best, they're probably not even praying over here. And they're, they're going around saying, oh, ISIS aren't Muslim. They're not Muslim. They're not Muslim. Um, and, and I think you have that kind of culture going on where, where Muslims are forced to condemn and squeeze their, uh, and sort of, you know, like you say, water down their deen and, and, and appear to be these liberal kind of Muslims. So what, what's your idea? What, what do you guys think? I know what Beatrice thinks, but what do you guys think about the conspiracy theories? What do you, what do you reckon? You know, I just want to say something. It's not really in relation to the... Uh, conspiracy theory as much as subhanallah you know when the 9-11 when you when i look at it you know and um, read about everything that's happening and how people are acting to it differently and they read into it right i believe subhanallah it's a, a very powerful message from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to the muslims rather than anybody else because that was the you know subhanallah the flare that showed where are the muslims stand in relation to their relationship to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you see. When that kicked, you know, when that kicked in and you see what's happening in the Muslim world and how nobody could move a muscle and how Muslims were extremely weak and all they can do is just, you know, start talking and debating and writing and screaming and just, but they, can't, they don't act. And then you have other places and other countries where they are, have no issues accepting the facts and playing along for the sake of politics and so on. When that happened, it just shows you the status of the Muslimin at the moment. That was like the shock that the Muslims needed to see where we stand. But very few people realize this. Very few people realize that because of that earthquake in the Muslim communities and in the Muslim countries, 
it tells you that in Allah and still people neglect the fact and they still want to argue and they want to talk about it and they want to point the finger at the other and blame everybody else right but when you look at ourselves akhi, subhanallah why are we in such a weak state now there's a hadith you know that the Rasulullah spoke about it and how weak we will be and we can't act upon that is the perfect example that it happened to show you so subhanallah look what's happening to the muslimin right now in 9-11 and what's happening in the countries in comparison to al-tatar for example which had it more us or what the tatar did for example or the mongols which had it more us or what happened in the crusades and the spanish inquisition in relation to public slaughtering and slandering and we had new fiqh in muslim spain where you have to do mesh on the walls and that is considered your wudu and you can pray with your eyes because if someone saw you pray, you're going to execute it. Which had it was? And people are having that right now, by the way. Yani right as we speak, there are still parts in the world where people are still treated like they're still under the expansion position. Right? So what is that? That shows, subhanAllah, there has to be so much actions to be done and few less words to be said because it's been said too much. Right? There is so many words. Khalas, yani. You can explore as much as possible. You can scream as loud as you can. But it's like you're putting someone in the deep end that only one or two individuals out of the 9 billion people would listen to you. And you still want to scream for these two people to listen to you rather than actually trying to climb up the ladder and be on top through actions. Mm. Right? So that's my two cents. Don't make yeah. the enemy for for. Uh, what you call it for biscuits, man? You know what I mean? Absolutely. <laughs> Stop making the enemy for biscuits, man. What were Absolutely, you doing? Man? Right? They don't Absolutely. love you. Yeah. <laughs> you know, one, one thing I, I just add is, you know, as we talk about this, and I think a lot of, you know, even in our community, like there are leaders who are more like, we're not condemning this stuff, and there are leaders who are more like, you know, let's condemn everything. And I think, you know, Muslim leaders were trying to make, you know, protect their community and guide their community in a really difficult time. But we're 20 years past that and yeah. the muslim has to be someone who does muhasaba right so we have to sit down look at the last 20 years and say how did that go what did we do what went right what went wrong and how do we learn those lessons to move forward um yeah. and in the end of the day you know subhanallah allah azawajal takes care of his deen and allah yeah. subhanahu wa ta'ala you know he'll change things in ways that you can't imagine uh we were doing da'wah in the 90s we were you're talking about islam allah wanted you know, the Quran to be the best selling book, like the brother said, right? He wanted mm -hmm. Islam to be on the map for people. He wanted people to connect. And some people read the Quran and hated Muslims more. And some people read the Quran and became Muslims themselves. You know, no. Allah got, with the Quran, Allah will guide people and punish people. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. Um, yeah. And so, and, and what's interesting too for us to look at is, you know, we're not on the side of obviously terrorists and people like that and whatnot. And we're not obviously on the side of the US and all the evils that they've done. 20 years later, it's undeniable the U.S. is weaker than they were 20 years ago. Absolutely. And, and also the terrorist groups, they became, you know, powerful for a moment. And then even then they're becoming weaker. And inshallah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will allow this religion to flourish and get stronger and Muslims to, you know, to become more engaged in, yeah. in their da'wah and more engaged in their religion and learn more. So Amen. despite all the difficulties and hardships, Amen. inshallah, there's good that's going to come from it, from everything that we've yeah. experienced. Um, you know, just want to add on something to that, you know, what Allah said in the Quran. And I think this links between the topic that we spoke pre-9-11 and even then. When Allah said in the Quran, you know, in Surah Al-Baqarah, وَلَنَّبْلُوَنَّكُمْ بِشَيْءٍ مِنَ الْخَوْفِ وَالْجُوَىٰ Right? We're going to test you, right, with fear. We're going to test you with hunger. We're going to test you with نَقْسٍ مِنَ الْأَمْوَالِ you know, We're going to test you with poverty. <laughs> وَالْأَنفُسِ And we're going to test you with people dying. And الثمرات. And then look. What's, there's a hack there's a hack that people are missing subhanallah so there is patience here it's a bashara sabreen that bushra means like listen when that happens there is patience to be made and don't be stupid right don't be stupid and be patient because what is how are you going to prove that Right? Indeed, we, we belong to Allah and indeed we're going to return to Him. Ulaika, these people, they're going to say these words, alayhim salawatum ar rabbi. These would have the blessings, they would have the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and these are the guided ones. So, in a time of calamity, 
in a time of weakness, what do you do? Now, there's a hack. There is patience. Subhan this is the hack, subhanAllah, because Allah doesn't give bushra. Right, Shaykh Ibrahim, you can even correct me on that, right? But Allah doesn't give bushra to mm. in the Quran unless there is a test to be made. So there's always, you know, so the bushra of al-jannah because you have to go through a hasib al-nas and yadraku and yuqulu amannam lift and right. So you have to go through tests. So when Allah is saying, وَبَشِّرَ sabirin, that means that this hack has to be done. That sabr. But when you're being patient, you say something. الَّذِينَ قَالُوا إِنَّ لِلَّهِ Right? This is words that you utter. So there's actions to be made. You're not being patient and sitting at home and doing nothing. You're being patient because you're being hakim. You're being smart because you can act according to certain boundaries that has been given to you. That's how we are right now. So you have to act. But the action should be according to what? Quran and Sunnah and adjusting yourself, people around you, and so on and so forth. SubhanAllah, this hack is completely neglected from the Quran. I haven't seen it, subhanAllah, except very minorities, wallahi, that they understand the concept of being patient. Because look, subhanAllah, right? You have a person, for example, who's very weak. SubhanAllah, he's not really tough. And then you have, you know, a very, you know, fat bloke coming to him, you know, and he's bullying him and pushing him and so on and so forth. Now, this geezer knows that if he's trying to pull one, a quick one, he's going to be knocked out. But... He knows he has, for example, a good backup that will come in five minutes and ten minutes. What does he do in these ten minutes? Now, this is what we need to do. Because Nasrullah Qareeb, right? The victory of Allah is coming without a shadow of a doubt. So what do you do now when the backup is coming? That is what we're talking about. You see? So I just wanted to highlight that. Yeah, I just want to jump in here real quick. <laughs> With um, 9-11 and the way that the Muslims reacted, right? You got to understand when Muslims come from the East to the West, they're not here like intentionally trying to spread Islam. They're here, you know, trying to get the bag. You understand? And they don't really understand like how like, the, these Western governments work or their history or anything like that, right? They just kind of waltz into a situation and kind of believe everything that they see on the media, right? So they don't know about false flags. They don't know about, um, you know, for example, Tuskegee experiment and, you know, and all these, all these type of crazy things that happen here, right? They just kind of, you know, trying to escape their war-torn countries, right? So the mm -hmm. prophet, the, I mean, Allah, he himself, he says, you know, that the enemy, they, they plot and plan, and Allah plots and plans, right? And Allah is khayr maqirin, right? He's the best of planners. You know what I'm saying? These guys, when, these people, when they do stuff like this, they plan this stuff out for years. You understand? They plan all this. Every single um, uh, social policy that you've seen in Muslim countries has been planned out for a long time. So so before, before they end up in these Muslim countries, they've already planned that. You no. feel me? So now... You got to think, all these so-called terrorist groups, they got, they got Muslims running around, oh, I condemn, I condemn, I condemn, Al-Qaeda, I condemn, I condemn, Taliban, I condemn, ISIS. You're not asking the right questions. Who are the ones who trained and armed these people to begin with? Mm -hmm. Who trained them, who armed them? Uh, Osama bin Laden. Who trained him? Yeah. Would the, the, did he just show up some somewhere and like you know you know what you know I'm just gonna go to Afghanistan with my 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 pea shooter and and fight me some some Russian soldiers? No. It was the U.S. government. The CIA trained him. His name was uh, Agent Tim Osman. Right. They armed him, and they were the ones fighters. Ten yeah. years later, he's a terrorist. You're not asking the right questions. Same thing with Taliban. Those Afghanis were trained by the CIA. Yes. Same thing with Al-Qaeda. When did Al-Qaeda become a thing? It became a thing after 9-11. When did ISIS become a thing? ISIS became a thing after Syria. 
funded and trained. Yeah. Funded and trained. 